The pentatonic box. You've heard of it, right? Well, I've just made it even easier for you to start soloing on your guitar and come up with cool licks and ideas in just seconds. And because I know you and me and pretty much any other guitar player out there would love to learn how to do things the easy way, I've got a little gift for you that's going to do just that. So be sure to stay tuned till the end of the lesson to find out what it is. Okay, now let's talk about the pentatonic box and how it can get you started soloing in no time at all. Now, this is not the same as the pentatonic scale, as in we're only really using a fragment of the pentatonic scale, which is a great exercise when you limit the amount of notes that you have access to so you can maximize the amount of musical ideas you come up with. Because generally, if we don't have a lot of you know musical ideas floating around in our head and we're given this entire scale, a lot of times we end up just kind of going through the motions and not really milking every note for what it's worth. So when we limit the amount of notes, it's actually a great thing for our musical creativity. Kind of forces you to come up with interesting ideas when you only have a limited number of notes to use. So the pentatonic box is comprised of, and this is in the key of C, uh, and we're going to talk about how to adapt this in both a major and minor pentatonic, right? Because pentatonic can be both major and minor. So we're starting with minor, right? In the key of C, like I did at the beginning of the video. So the pentatonic box in the key of C is here. We're going to have our first finger on the eighth fret of the A string, third finger on 10th fret. Okay, so those two notes on the A string, the same two notes, or the same two frets rather, on the D string, right, 8th fret, 10th fret, then 8th fret, 10th fret on the G string, and that's it. Those six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's all we need to work with, right? That's our pentatonic box. Now, if I were to outline the entire minor pentatonic scale, right, I was accenting the notes within the pentatonic box, you know, for effect, but just showing you how it fit right within that neighborhood. Those notes are made up of notes in the pentatonic scale. We're just, like I said, limiting it to a just simple little box shape that's got plenty of mileage for you to start soloing it. Now, let me show you a little trick. This is how you can find pretty much any key, right? If you want to jump into the minor pentatonic box, this is how you do it. You want to find the root note on the low E string, right? So in this case, when we did in the key of C, that low E is actually on, on the eighth fret of the low E string. That's a C note right there, right? So we found the note, the root note on the low E string. So what this tells us is now, now that we know where the note is, all we have to do is fill in the pentatonic box directly below it, right? Starting on the same fret, but on the string below, right? Then we got our pentatonic box, right? So anywhere in this, this works with any key, which we'll go over it in different keys in a second, but that's how you wanna, that's how you wanna think of it. If, if you're first, like you go through this little checklist, right? Like, okay, I'm ready to jam. I can use minor pentatonic. Let me find that minor pentatonic box. We're jamming in the key of C, cool. Here's a C and that means, those are my six notes in the pentatonic box I can work with. So remember in the beginning of the video when I played that first note? You know, I was just, I signaled what key I was in, right? Cause I'm not playing any backing track or anything at the moment, right? So I was, I started by hitting that low note, you know, which is a cool thing to do when you're playing by yourself. It kind of helps set the stage and then kind of uh, establish the, the tonal context, right? To the listener, right? Or even to your own self, just to know what key you're playing in, right? So when I hit that note, which I like to do with my thumb here, you know, it's like, it's what, like what the pros do and I like to pretend I'm a pro. So, you know, you hit that note and then, and then boom, you're, you've established the context. Now you can play that box. And remember, we're limiting the amount of notes we're working with. So we have a whole lot of, uh, uh, you could say selective pressure on these notes, which is a good thing. This is a very good thing because you can only do this so many times before you get so bored, you're like, oh, I have to come up with something else, but you don't want to add extra notes yet, right? You want to really learn how to maximize the amount of notes that you do have, okay? Now, that's when we're figuring out in a minor context, right? But if, let's say we wanted to use the major pentatonic box. And by the way, just one last thing I want to mention here. In the minor pentatonic box, right, we're going to have our root note, right? I know, I know I said it's right above or as how we can find it quickly, but once we're in that box, right, this note, th this root note on the low E string is technically outside of that box, but we can find a higher octave of it right here, which would be, if we're going in order, would be the fourth note. One, two, three, four, right? Remember, there's six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we're going in order, one, two, three, four, that fourth note is going to be our root note. So that note is also C, all right? This happens to be the 10th fret of the D string. So when we're playing the minor pentatonic box in the key of C, 
we have that root note. So as long as we kind of focus on that note being home base, we can just play around it all we want, but we're still establishing that context, right? If we don't wanna play that lower uh, root note, right? Again, this is just how you can quickly find where you're supposed to drop in. Almost think of it like, once you find that key on the low E string, you find the note, you can kind of paratroop mentally, right? Paratroop that pentatonic box in and then just start playing, right? So if I were to just use just those six notes, but accentuate that root note, it sounds something like this. Right? Always coming back to that note, it kind of brings us home, right? So that's how we would use it in a minor pentatonic context. Now, if we wanted to find it in a major pentatonic, this is all we would have to do. Take the same shape, the same box of notes, and move it three frets down. One, two, three, all right? To, to this region, which would be between the third fret, or sorry, fifth fret, seventh fret, on the A, D, and G strings. <laughs> Right? But now, now that we're in the major pentatonic box, we have to shift where that root note is because the positioning of that is important for the major context. And in this case, the third, or sorry, the fifth fret here of the G string is our major root note. It's also C, right? But in this context, it establishes a major. Right, so it has that happy Almond Brothers kind of vibe, right, compared to. You know, so you can associate both the minor and the major pentatonic boxes with a certain sound. If you want to achieve a certain sound, like if you're like, I want to go full, you know, Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, minor pentatonic is great. If I want to go full, you know, Almond Brothers, you know, Dwayne Almond, like boom, you can, you can just totally uh, move it to major, right? But remember, that root note is home base. It's home base. So we have to think about, uh, you know, just always diverting back to that note so that way we find, we establish the tonal center. Now, this especially is important when you're playing by yourself, but why don't we try it over a backing track where I'm just gonna go back and forth between both the major and the minor pentatonic boxes. We'll stay in the key of C. It'll be like a blues shuffle in the key of C. And we'll just kind of see how it sounds. I'm gonna go back and forth between the two because in blues, it's actually, you know, permissible to go back and forth between major and minor pentatonic. So right there, quick example, going back and forth between the major and the minor and trying to find, you know, ways to have it make sense. Because if you're just going to do this, like, right, it's just, it's just, you know, you're just kind of meandering through the skills. There's not real, there's not a whole lot of deliberate musical action happening, right? So you want to think in terms of phrases like musical sentences, and you can create that with just this handful of notes that you have access to. And hey, I got to ask real quick. If you're finding value in these lessons, please let me know by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. I make these lessons specifically for you watching, and that's the only way I can tell that you want more of them. But anyway, back to the lesson. Now I want to show you a quick tip if let's say you want to jump straight into the major pentatonic box and then work your way up to minor instead of starting in minor and then, you know, finding major from there. So instead of looking for the root note, remember how I said we find the root note on the low E string and then we paratroop that, you know, mentally like, like that, that uh, pentatonic box, right? It's going to be a little bit different to find, you know, to find it quicker on the, uh, with the major pentatonic box. What we want to do is find the root note on the A string. So in this case, the third fret of the A string, I'm just going to tell you, is a C note, right? In standard tuning, always third fret A string is the C note, right? Now notice how that pentatonic box is just two frets up, right? When you kind of complete it and then, all right. Now this right here, this kind of connecting point between the root note and this major pentatonic box is actually a great little way to add even more flavor if you wanted to, let's say, this is just as kind of a, like an added bonus, right? Starting on that major root note on the A string, right? Right, that's a very, very famous lick right there. Right, and all I did was essentially start from that lower root note and then use just, you know, most of that pentatonic box, like slide into it and then end on that root note, right? That major root note that we want to accentuate in that box, right? Remember fifth fret on the G string? 
And so that way you can just default to that if you want to, just like how if in the um, minor pentatonic box you wanted to, you know, hit that uh, minor root note, right? And I'm only calling it a minor root note and a major root note just to signal like how you can find the pattern visually, right? This is this is meant to just like give you within seconds being like, okay, minor root note, here it is. Here's the minor pentatonic box, bam. So if someone's like, here, take a solo, let's jam in C, and then they're playing rhythm. And then you're like, all right, it's time for me to solo. You're like, oh, okay, here we go. Here's C, bam. I know where I'm supposed to go and I know where I can find the major pentatonic box too. Now let's see if we were to adjust the key. Let's say if we were to move to the key of A, would this still apply? Absolutely, this would apply to every musical key. Same idea, that checklist, right? Start by finding the, let's say we wanna find the minor uh, pentatonic box. Start with the low E string, right? The root note on the low E string. Now A is found on the fifth fret on the low E string uh, for that root note, right? So that means our pentatonic box is directly below. So if, if the root note, right, is on the low E string is on the fifth fret, that means our first note of the pentatonic box, the minor pentatonic box, is going to be on the fifth fret of the A string, the string below it, right? And then we fill in that gap. We're going to do five, seven, five, seven, five, seven on the A, D, and G strings. Right, but remember, we're in the minor pentatonic box. So that means the fourth note, one, two, three, four, that's our upper octave of the minor root note, right? So that's the note we want to accentuate. accentuate. All right now if we want to find the major right remember we just go three frets down one two three play that exact same shape and then remember our major root note in the major pentatonic box is going to be on it's going to be the one two three four fifth note if we're moving in order right linearly the fifth note in this case being the second fret of the g string which is an a note right and then you know how i said we can find the uh also the root note on the a string in the key of a the root note is the open A string, right? So if we wanted to do that thing like sliding from the root note into, into the major pentatonic box, we just do it from the open A string. All right? And then, you know, let's say you want to go from the major pentatonic box to the minor, you just go three frets up. One, two, three. And remember, you got to shift focus from where you land right, on accentuating the root note to the D string there, right, the fourth note of it, one, two, three, four. So the fourth note in the minor pentatonic box is the root note, and the fifth note in the major pentatonic box is the root note. And remember, by, by sticking to that, you are establishing the musical context of each box, because the, these boxes are pretty, can otherwise be pretty vague musically, so we want to focus on those specific root notes so that we can establish a good tonal center. Now let's hear how this sounds in a backing track in the key of A. so same rules apply right i just kind of adapted to the vibe of the backing track it was more of a slow blues which gives you more time to breathe more time to really make those notes sing and just focusing on simple phrases and ways to connect both the major and the minor pentatonic boxes in coherent musical sentences and like i said this little pentatonic box hack applies to every single musical key it does not matter as long as you keep in mind right whether you're looking for the major or the minor root note, so you know what context you're in, and of course you know what root notes to accentuate to make sure that you're still within the major and minor pentatonic boxes. All right, so you and I have just covered your pentatonic box checklist, which will really give you an unfair advantage over other guitar players who wanna get started soloing. Embed this into your mind, and you'll be able to create awesome sounding guitar solos and ideas every time you pick up your guitar. But chances are, you're gonna find yourself needing even more new creative ideas for your solos. But don't worry, old Eddie's got you covered. This right here is a brand new system I've created called the Fretboard Conveyor Belt, and you're gonna be getting your copy for free.
With it, you'll now have some fresh licks and patterns that you can use, so you'll never be stuck playing boring sounding solos ever again. And as the name suggests, you'll be able to move these anywhere on your fretboard. Just click here to claim your free copy or check the link in the description box. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.